acute ankle sprain physical therapy, approach considerations. Pain reduction is essential, but improvement of any loss of motion, strength, and or proprioception is equally important. A meta-analysis found that neuromuscular rehabilitation results in more rapid improvements in function for recurrent lateral ankle sprains. Treatment should begin with a trial of conservative therapy for approximately two to three months. It is generally accepted that for most patients, operative repair of third-degree ATFL tears and medial ankle ligament tears does not contribute to an improved outcome. One of the few absolute indications for surgery in patients with Sprained ankles is a distal talofibular ligament third-degree sprain that causes widening of the ankle mortis. A second indication is a deltoid sprain with the deltoid ligament caught intraarticularly and with widening of the medial ankle mortis. Physical therapy during the recovery phase is aimed at the patient regaining full ROM, strength, and proprioceptive abilities. While a formal physical therapy program is particularly important for athletes and other patients who need a quicker recovery, most low-demand patients will do well with a basic home exercise program. The National Athletic Trainers Association NADA, issued guidelines for treating and preventing ankle sprains in athletes including recommendations for the early use of nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, post-injury, functional rehabilitation rather than immobilization for grade I and two ankle sprains, and prophylactic ankle supports for athletes with a history of previous ankle sprains. 40, 41, immobilization with a ridged stirrup brace or below knee cast is recommended for grade three sprains for at least 10 days, followed by controlled therapeutic exercise. Other recommendations include the following. To prevent injury, institute a three-month or longer balance and neuromuscular control program for athletes, especially for those at higher risk. To reduce re-injury rates, institute balance training throughout rehabilitation and follow-up. Management of ankle sprains. During rehabilitation, include comprehensive range of motion, flexibility, and strengthening exercises of the surrounding musculature before returning the patient to sports-specific tasks. Ensure the injured limb's functional performance measures at least 80% of the uninjured limb. Note that the diagnostic accuracy of special tests, e.g., anterior drawer test, Inversion Taylor tilt test is greater 5 days after injury than 2 days after injury. Conservative therapy for acute sprain. The acute phase of treatment should last for 1 to 3 days after the injury. The goals of acute treatment are to control pain, minimize swelling, and maintain or regain realm. Rice, prices. Rest, ice, compression, and elevation, i.e., rice, are the mainstays of acute treatment. More comprehensively, the combination of protection, relative rest, ice, compression, elevation, and support prices is used. 1. Protective devices include air splints or plastic and Velcro braces. Most sprains can be treated without casting. Depending on the severity of the sprain, protective devices are used for 4 to 21 days. Criteria for discontinuing use of a device include minimal swelling and pain at the site of injury. The ROM should be smooth, particularly with dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Relative rest is advocated because it promotes tissue healing. Advise the patient to avoid activities that cause increased pain or swelling. Advocate early, pain-free movements during this time. Encourage patients to take their ankle out of their brace and move it through a pain-free ROM. Aggressive pain-free ROM is recommended. Having patients spell the letters of the alphabet with their foot and ankle several times per day is one simple activity to recommend even in an acute care setting. Use ice to control swelling, pain, and muscle spasm.
As a rule, do not apply ice or cold packs directly to the skin. Wrap the pack in a towel before use. Recommend that the patient apply ice for 15 to 20 minutes, three times daily. Contrast baths can be used 24 to 48 hours after injury. Recommend the use of compression with an ace wrap and elastic ankle sleeve or a lace-up ankle support. Advise the patient that further support of the ankle can be facilitated by wearing high-top lace-up shoes. This can help to minimize edema. 3. Encourage elevation of the injured ankle to facilitate the reduction of swelling. Advise the patient to keep the ankle above the level of the heart. Support can include taping or the use of lace-up ankle supports with combination hook eye, i.e. Velcro, straps. 3. Ankle braces. Immobilization can aid healing but can hinder it as well. Acutely protecting the weakened, painful area is appropriate. But prolonged immobilization leads to muscle atrophy and loss of motion. Limited stress creates a stronger scar formation. Because the collagen fibers line up parallel to the stress instead of at random. For these reasons, limited immobilization with a stirrup or lace-up ankle brace is usually used whereas casting is avoided. However, results from the Collaborative Ankle Support Trial cast indicated that there are benefits to the use of a below-knee cast for 10 days. CAST was a randomized, controlled trial designed to estimate the clinical effectiveness and cost-effectiveness of three methods of ankle support compared with double-layer tubular compression bandage. The below-knee cast and the air cast brace applied two to three days after Injury, to allow time for swelling to resolve, offered cost-effective alternatives to tubular bandages for acute, severe ankle sprains. With the below knee cast having the advantage in terms of overall recovery at three months. Because no differences in long-term outcome were noted. The investigators suggested that practitioners should consider likely compliance and acceptability to patients when choosing a brace 50 occasionally the use of posterior splinting and crutches with non-weight bearing ambulation is helpful for more severe ankle sprains i.e when foot motion and weight bearing are extremely painful usually the use of a posterior splint is limited to a few days and weight bearing as tolerated is encouraged in general, ankle splints are applied to minimize movement and provide support and comfort by stabilizing an injury at that joint. Splints are primarily used to stabilize injuries to bones until the patient can be evaluated by a consultant, such as an orthopedic surgeon. Splints are also used to achieve immobilization for primary healing or in the pre-surgical Period. All patients with injuries that are splinted should be referred for evaluation by a consultant in a timely fashion, usually within 2 to 3D. Ankle braces have been shown to be effective in preventing some types of ankle sprains. The use of high top shoes has been proposed to prevent ankle injuries, but study results have been mixed. Janssen et al. evaluated the effectiveness of combined bracing in neuromuscular training or bracing alone against the use of neuromuscular training on recurrences of ankle sprain. After usual care, the study included 384 athletes aged 18 to 70 who had sustained a lateral ankle sprain. The training group received an eight-week home-based neuromuscular training program. The brace group received an ankle brace to be worn for 12 months. And the third group received both the training program, as well as the ankle brace, to be worn for eight weeks. The main outcome measure was self-reported recurrence of the ankle sprain. During the one-year follow-up, 69 participants, 20%, reported a recurrent ankle sprain. 29, 27% in the training group, 17, 15% in the brace group and 23, 19% in the group that combined both. The authors concluded that bracing was superior to neuromuscular training in 
reducing the incidence but not the severity of self-reported recurrent ankle sprains after usual care. Ankle taping. Ankle taping can increase ankle stability by at least two mechanisms. Limitation of motion and proprioception. For a single treatment, ankle taping is less expensive than either a brace or an athletic shoe. Initially, the effectiveness of ankle taping is similar to bracing. However, studies have demonstrated a significant loss of effectiveness after 24 minutes of activity. Moreover, ankle taping becomes virtually ineffective after periods as short as 40 minutes. The effect of taping on individuals with chronic ankle instability is relatively small. The effectiveness of ankle taping is highly dependent on the expertise of the individual who performs the taping. Although the primary effect is improved proprioceptive function, taping may also cause variable effects on motor performance. Ankle taping has the potential to either enhance or hinder the function of the perineal muscles, depending on the location and technique with which the ankle was taped. Thus, having an experienced certified athletic trainer, ATC, or physical therapist do the taping usually produces optimal results. In general, athletes without easy access to an ATC or physical therapist may find an ankle brace easier to use and more effective. Pain control for acute sprain. The use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs NSAIDs, in treating sprains is somewhat controversial. 68. Some physicians argue that the anti-inflammatory effects of NSAIDs are helpful in decreasing swelling, which ultimately increases the speed of recovery. Others believe that acutely used NSAIDs can lead to increased swelling if Owing to platelet inhibition, bleeding occurs. 68, 69. If NSAIDs are not used, acetaminophen, Tylenol, Panadol, anison aspirin free, or other pain medicines may be required for pain control in some athletes with moderate to severe ankle sprains.